This is an educational video that covers how structural racism affects the evaluation and diagnosis of pigmented skin findings on patients with dark skin and how it contributes to health disparities as guided by the five minute moment for racial justice teaching framework. The five minute moment for racial justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the learning and clinical context, the current standard of a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take for health equity. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this video, viewers will recognize how structural racism and racial bias affects the way we diagnose skin findings in patients with dark skin and identify resources to provide more equitable care. A 70-year-old black male presents for a routine primary care clinic visit. He has noticed a new two centimeter mole on the bottom of his feet. He otherwise feels well and is without symptoms. The learner physician recommends that the patient be monitored and return in one year for another follow-up visit. How might structural racism be affecting patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how these two clinicians navigate this conversation. This is a good opportunity for us to discuss how to diagnose concerning skin findings across different skin tones. This wasn't something I learned during my training but it's very important for us to know to provide equitable care for all our patients. Let's take a few minutes to talk about this. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Skin concerns are one of the most common reasons patients seek medical attention. One in every four visits to a primary care physician involves skin complaints. So it's important for us to know how to approach them as well as the limitations across different skin tones. What are some differential diagnoses for pigmented skin lesions. It's pretty broad, but could be benign moles to separate keratoses to malignancies like melanoma. Wonderful. You definitely wouldn't want to miss a malignant melanoma. The way we currently teach how to recognize melanomas is using the ABCDE approach, an acronym that reminds us to look at asymmetry, border, color, diameter and darkness, and evolution of the mole over time. Most textbooks on skin pathologies teach this approach. However, the majority of skin conditions in these textbooks are shown on light colored skin. Less than 5% of images are shown on dark skin. How do you think this could affect how we diagnose skin conditions in patients with dark skin? Well, if doctors are not familiar with how melanoma looks on dark skin, they could miss it or delay diagnosis. Exactly. The Jamaican musician Bob Marley experienced a delayed diagnosis. He noticed a spot under his right toe for several years and went to see two doctors, who both attributed it to trauma after a football game. When he was finally offered a biopsy, it confirmed the diagnosis of acrolentigenous melanoma, the most deadly melanoma. It's often found in hard-to-spot places such as finger and toenails or the palms and soles. It's also the most common melanoma in people with dark skin. At the time that Marley was diagnosed in the late 70s, the most popular medical textbook included melanoma subtypes only on light skin. Acrolentigenous melanoma was under-recognized in dark skin. Bob Marley was offered an amputation but declined. He passed away four years after diagnosis from metastatic disease at the age of 36. Is melanoma more aggressive in black patients? The five-year survival rate for melanoma in black patients remains at 67%, the same as it has since the 1970s compared to 90% for white patients. The reason for this disparity is multifactorial, but stems from policies and practices that have disadvantaged black patients, including limiting equitable access to high quality, timely medical care, less representation in clinical trials, and our own lack of awareness of how skin conditions can appear on darker skin due to there being fewer textbook depictions. All of this can delay diagnosis and treatment, 
which further perpetuates mistrust of the medical community. Is there anything we can do to bridge this? I'm so glad that you asked that question, because in the last 20 years, there is a new textbook, Dermatology for Skin of Color, that shows the full spectrum of skin conditions in patients with skin of color. New websites and crowdsourced databases such as Brown Skin Matters also reflect skin conditions in non-white skin tones. So bring this back to our patient and clinic today. What should we do instead? From our discussion, what I learned is skin conditions can appear different across different skin tones. Historically, medical textbooks have not equitably represented skin conditions on dark skin types. This is one example of how structural racism affects the diagnosis and treatment of melanoma and contributes to health disparities. New resources on skin of color exist for us to educate ourselves as healthcare professionals. Given that, I think we should examine his foot together and consider referring him to a dermatologist. Fabulous. Let's go see him together. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5mmracialjustice.stanford.edu.